Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. Today, I'm with a very special guest, the first Zoom interview of 2023. Every year, every uh, every New Year and every uh, anniversary, everyone gets the first title again. I just had my first interview of 2023 with Chachi, and now you're the first Zoom interview of 2023. <laughs> and uh, we are basically six degrees removed. Is that what it's called? You know, the separation thing, the I think it's six degrees of separation. That's what it's called. Um, I don't know what that is, but let's. I'm going to roll with it. <laughs> what? You don't know what that is? Oh, no. my gosh. It's like, I got to look it up, though. It's like when you, you're you so close to knowing someone, but you don't know them. You're like removed by like one person. Oh, okay. Knowing someone. So okay. basically, um, you've worked with, by the way, my guest today is Matt. Just Matt. Is that your, is that your uh, government name as well? It's Matthew. Matthew. So I was just like, I don't want to like make up a whole artist name and have the whole like alter ego thing. Like I'm pretty much just me most of the time. So I was just like, what's the easy that isn't too different? And I was like, Matt. Fair enough. Matt. You know? Different so- enough where people don't know it's my actual name, but I don't know. I thought it was cool. And you add the E, like like the like cars, you know, like a matte black car Exactly, like that texture, the yeah. matte texture. There we go. Um, but yeah, me and Matt are six degrees removed. I think that's the right terminology. Um, we both have worked with Mark E. Basie. Um, Mark was my last in-person interview before COVID. And, it oh, was, no. and the promo video we used to promote the interview was like making a joke about COVID because someone in the room that we were interviewing like coughed and we're like, oh my gosh, COVID. And like, next thing we know, the world's in fucking lockdown. The rest is history. <laughs> so Crazy. Um, that interview holds a special place in my heart. And it's, it's cool to see that um, you have worked with Matt, um, with Mark as well. Um, but before we get into that, um, I'd like to get into your beginnings. Um, I From the previous interviews I've heard, you know, you started making music for your family, da, da, da. But what was interesting to me is that um, it basically within your first few songs, you already were part of a management. I don't know if you're on a label or if you're considered independent, but it I'm was... I'm indie. <laughs> do you have like yeah. a distribution deal or anything or is it completely just... Um, yeah, it's with my management. They have like a label within their management. So mm-hmm. I'm not signed to the label. I'm just managed by them and... Yeah, I just use their distribution, so they help me out with that. But independent, just yeah. rocking with them through management, and uh, yeah, it's going great. So, what is that like, though? Because for most artists, and I guess I can I consider myself an artist as well. Podcasting is a yeah. form of art. Um, a lot of artists have really had to, you know, struggle to get to get even a management or. A, marketing behind a single your your first single with the music video mm. did, did numbers for sure but it seemed like for you you went from making music for your family your dad's friend having a connection and then the next thing you know you're part of a management so how 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 have you been dealing with that has there been any like backlash within the artist community or like do you realize that is like pretty special for that to happen oh dude it's so special so um I mean, I got unbelievably lucky, you know, like I just started doing it as a hobby, not even considering that it could be like a profession or a career path. And I just would make music for fun. Um, And someone thought I was good enough to want to be my manager. And I started working with this guy named Garnett March. He used to be like a Interscope executive or whatever. And um he thought I was cool. He Wait, just brought fuck? me. To, I know that guy. You know Garnett Mark. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know him <laughs> yeah. personally, but like my, I'm my family's friends with him. I know. Really, that's so weird. What a small world. What the fuck? But um, yeah, no, I. So my dad is good friends with his brother, and um, he was just like, send me your music. I want to hear it. So I sent it. Just like dumb songs that I would just make for fun, and not, like I didn't even have any. I was like, okay, I guess. Like I'll just send it. He thought it was cool. He sent it to his brother. His brother was like, I think you have a cool sound. Let's see what happens. And then he invited me to some sessions. And then he's like, okay, like we're going to make this work. And then for a year, I just kind of like worked with him. And we just made a bunch of songs. And then I realized I didn't want to go in that direction because I was kind of making more rap music. Mm -hmm. 
and I didn't really want to rap because I'm not like the best at it. And I just feel like my image isn't like a rapper. Right. Um, so then I switched to music, I mean, singing. And um, I met uh, Madden and Naveed and Justin through another mutual friend of my dad who I was just, you know, shopping around for new management to see if anyone was willing to take a chance on me. And they thought I was cool. And um, we went and did some more studio sessions just to see if they liked me. And then they thought I was talented or whatever. And um, now we're here. And uh, I released music about like seven months ago. So I'm like seven months into like my career of music. And, uh, and this, dude's going got, okay. this, dude, yeah. this dude's got Gucci sheets in his back. In the if you're watching the Zoom, <laughs> he's got a it's Gucci. Fake. It's fake. <laughs> All fake. <laughs> I'm dead. Um, his management told him to say it's fake, by the way. It's a real, it's a real, it's a real <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy though. So how did, is your dad is like in the music or entertainment industry no, whatsoever? No, he's not. My dad's a lawyer Interesting. and he just knows people, I guess, you know, small town LA. Small and, town um, <laughs> LA. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. And he just told me to send it to people. Like, why not? And I was like, I guess, you know, just like anything, if you don't try it, you're never going to know. So I tried it and I just got lucky. You know, people thought I was cool. Wow. I don't know why, but, you know, they just thought I was cool, thought I had talent and they wanted to take a chance on me. So we're taking the chance right now. <laughs> did you did you grow up in L.A. or did you move to L.A.? I grew up in L.A. I was born in Santa Monica and I just kind of bounced around like everywhere. Santa Monica. I lived in Malibu for a little bit. I lived in the Palisades. I lived in I went to high school in Beverly Hills. I went to Beverly High, Beverly High. And then um Right now, I'm living in Orange, actually, not even in L.A. I'm going to school at Chapman University, so. She... Okay. Yeah, but it sucks. Every time I want to go to the studio, it's like a 50-minute to an hour drive both ways, so. Yeah. But that's where the scene is, so I got to be out of there. So what did you send when you when you first... You, you sent it to Garnett or someone sent... You gave it to someone who I gave it to I sent it to Garnett's brother. Got it. So you gave it to Garnett's... What did you send to him, though? Was it like a SoundCloud oh, song or was it, it like was an unreleased? Literally or just something it? I made in GarageBand that I thought was cool. Huh. I can try to find it if you want, but it's like super weak. That's why. In my opinion, but I think he thought there's potential in, I think he liked the sound of my voice or just like my ability to, to come up with melodies or something. And then I definitely got better and progressed, but. I was just like literally in my closet, the quietest place in my house. And I just threw on some Apple Jack headphones and just made it with the the little Apple headphones. So breakdown for people who don't know who Garnett is, isn't he like an A&R? Yeah, he's an A&R. Uh, I think he used to be like a little bit higher up in Interscope. He was like I don't an know executive he or something. Them anymore. Yeah, he was like an executive. And then I think now he just does A&R. I think he still has connections with people in those things, but he's more independent. I know he's like starting his own like, um, like app or something with music. Yeah, doing some cool stuff. But good dude, super nice. I think he was just a a little bit older, and I was like looking for more like younger in the scene because everything's about like social media right now, and we were really just focused on the music. So I'm still working on the social media part. Right. So what? It's breakdown for artists who don't know what an AR and R even really does. So like I think bare minimum, basically anyone like someone could say that their friend introduced someone to someone else and that's an AR. Like if your friend likes know, music. Yeah. So but there's a deeper level to what an AR actually is. Anyone can say right. they're an AR, but what does like a Garnet March actually do for someone? So basically it's like the middleman, the connector. So he kind of takes care of making sure I meet the right producers, making sure I work with different artists, making sure that all the deals are good. Like if we do a deal with an artist, he kind of like sets it up and like makes it work. He's kind of like the introduction man mm -hmm. where they make all the connects with people. And they also like scout and like look for talent and make sure they're like, oh, this could be the next thing. Oh, this song's pretty good. Like we should bring it to the label or bring it to that management and see if they want to like take it up and run with it. So they're kind of like the the eyes and ears and like the connectors. So that's my definition of A and R. I don't know if it's yeah. like super accurate, but that's just what my experience with it has been. No, that, that's pretty. That's pretty accurate. Do it. 
and you yeah. get and, and as an A&R you can make a fuck ton of money too like that's yeah so that's like if you story. sign the song then like you have like a percentage maybe of it so 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 for you as an independent artist who only has a few songs under their, under their belt how does that work going into studios like do you have to have a budget set up or does somebody yeah so i've been lucky enough to have like my family help me out and just like do everything out of pocket hmm. so we haven't had to like reach out to anybody to help with budgeting, but um, yeah, basically I have like a studio set up at home. So if I wanted to just cut melodies or make songs at home, I can do that. But when we go in to like make a professional cut and something that we want to release, we'll just go into a studio and rent it out. We have like, I have a, like a lot of cool people that I work with and um, yeah, we just, kind of rent out the studio for six hours to eight hours, sometimes even 12 hours. And we sit down and we just make the songs or we finish the songs that we have the idea for. And we just make it super clean, get it ready. And then you send it to mixing and mastering. And that takes about a couple of days. And then you got to ingest the song if you want it to do well, if you're Mm -hmm. a smaller artist like me, and then hopefully some playlists pick it up and, Mm -hmm. you know, you could have a hit or you could just release a song that you want people to hear. Right. But, and and do you produce at all or do you just uh, write or what? I, I just do writing and melodies and I sing, but I need to start producing. It's just, I never was like, I actually, that's not true. I used to know how to play guitar and stuff, but I stopped when I was really little. Hmm. So I kind of forgot everything, but I would love to learn it again. I probably should start teaching myself how to do it. And um, yeah, producing is super helpful. Yeah, I know what I want for like my beats to sound, how I want my songs to sound. I just don't know how to actually make it. So I have to have producers come or like my friends who know how to produce, they help me with it too. Yeah, it just takes time to learn. The yeah. Ropes. You're definitely new to it. That's that's so wild. Um, So so with that like how have you been to like writing camps if you're, you're, you're literally like still like under a year in like how do you figure out how um, to write and how I've never to... been to like an official writing camp but um you know I I've worked with lots of people who have helped me who've given me tips you know we've just sat and wrote and just gone through it we've made really bad songs we've made songs that we just completely throw away mm-hmm. and it's just like trial and error really you know with anything you know you start not the best at it and then you try it a bunch of times and you get better i mean i've always had like a sort of knack for like making melodies but like figuring out the words to put into the melodies has definitely been not a challenge but it's been a learning experience and i've been able to make new progressions as i've been doing it for longer and longer yeah but um i'm definitely looking to go to some writing camps i think actually my manager, Justin, he's got like a cool collective and they're doing a writing camp in a couple of weeks. So I might go to that. Hell yeah. My first real experience in a writing camp, just being with a bunch of creatives and just coming up with songs is going to be a very cool experience. So yeah, you got to do that stuff. My, uh, a lot of yeah. my friends have uh, made lifelong friends through going to writing camps from like oh, yeah. different countries and stuff even. I mean, yeah, I've met, I actually have met a lot of cool producers mm-hmm. and just like in artists too, but a lot of people through just doing music, but definitely like am looking forward to starting to really create like connections with people and relationships. And, you know, I, I love making music for myself because that's basically what I've been doing for the last like couple of years, but Mm -hmm. I just love making music in general. Yeah. So if I can help someone make their song that they want to love and they want to release and I can be a part of it, like there's nothing better than creating like, um, like something that people love and a song that even just a c- collective group of people are writing just creating music and just sitting in a room and listening back to it and being like damn we really just made this right now like mm-hmm. there's nothing better than that so your first song innocent you, you uh, in a previous interview you said it was based on someone you know's previous relationship so yeah your first two songs kind of revolve around another person so mm-hmm. Do you think that's going to be a detriment going forward, though, like figuring out how to have your own voice and style in music and give a piece of yourself? Um, I mean, yeah, it's definitely something I'm going to incorporate in my music. I think for those specific songs, 
when I was in the studio, I just was, I couldn't really think of anything. Mm. And the producer that I was working with, he just suggested, why don't you call some of your friends and see what they're going through and just see if you can pull inspiration from their stories. So that's what I did. And we ended up coming up with those songs. So it's not that like, that's the way I want to write my music, but that's just like what happened during that period of time when I was making the songs. I just couldn't think of anything in my life that was worth writing about. Right. So, I mean, I'm, I've am i definitely gained a lot of experience and gone through a lot of things that I want to write about now, but I just pull inspiration from whatever I can because, you know, it's not always about me and writing songs about me. It's just about writing songs that people can relate to and people can understand and people feel the same way or, you know, my friends are going through things and they, they want to get it out, but they don't, you know, want to put it out to the world. And they just right. tell me, and they're like, yeah, you can make a song about it, you know kind of helps them with their feelings too or understand what they're going through and think about it more so no it's I, just a, yeah no yeah I, I get that for sure like i that's why i have so many different types of voices on the pod i'm like yeah i'm three almost four years into this now and have Sweet. done almost 400 interviews now so that's Damn. a lot of different voices to be heard and understand so i, I get that that's it that's a i think hmm I just, I want, my goal with this interview, because you're so fresh, is I want to, like, leave, like, an impact on you and, like, you think things through going yeah. forward. Because I think we're roughly around the same age as well. And yeah. um, I just, you're you're in college. I decided not to go to college to pursue being in media. So I've made a lot of sacrifices that some right. of my friends haven't had to make. And I'm a fucking podcaster when there's not that many people who are going to drop their entire life to be right. a fucking <laughs> podcaster from the, the ground up. So it's interesting to hear like your perspective right now. And it's, it's going to be exciting to see how you grow. One thing that keeps sticking in my mind, and I'd, I'd like to hear your thought process through this. Mm -hmm. And maybe um, I'm thinking about this in the wrong way, but it seems like, like, you're, you're you're well off and you're able to support your music career. Have you thought about how that's going to affect you going forward working with artists who maybe did not come from that type of background and how they might treat you or how an audience might treat you who might think this guy hasn't had a struggle. Maybe you have, I don't know. That's why I'm trying to get to the point of it. But oh, yeah. who's, who are going to be like, this guy hasn't had to struggle for anything within his first, his first song is already part of a management company. He's able to put advertising behind his stuff. Like I have friends who've been doing music for, you know, close right. to two decades and have never had a chance to have any marketing budget right. or management. So how are you going to deal with that when it comes to like fans maybe judging you, artists who maybe maybe not might not want to work with you because they don't believe in your background or whatever? Right. Um, no, that's a great question. And that's, you know, something that I don't think about super often, but I definitely think about. And, um, you know, the first thing I would probably say to someone who has that perspective or someone that's going to judge me off of that, um, I would just probably come back and say, look, like, I was born into this, like, opportunity. I didn't, like, choose it. It's mm. not like it just happened. Like, I was adopted. So I was extremely lucky to be able to be in the situation that I'm in. You know, I could have had a completely different life. Mm. But also, people don't they'll give you an opportunity, but if you can't capitalize on the opportunity, then like, it's not worth anything. So I've had these experiences. I've had these opportunities. I've been very lucky, mm. but at the same time, like I didn't, I'm not being cocky about it. I'm not like rubbing it in people's faces. I'm very thankful. I'm very blessed to be able to have these opportunities. And with these opportunities, I want to help as many people as I can. And I want to show people that like, you can do it without it. I was just lucky enough to have it. I just, you know, I still have to put in the same amount of work as other people because in order to make it, it doesn't just happen from being talented or having opportunities. You still have to go through all of the motions that everyone else has to go through. It's just, I'm lucky enough to be one step ahead and have a helping, like people helping me out. But it doesn't take away from the fact that I'm still an artist. I'm still... I'm not a big artist, you know, I haven't blown up. I don't have, you know, millions of followers, millions of streams. Like I'm not performing at, you know, festivals and mm. going on tour. Like I'm still lower than most of the artists that you see on like anything. Right. Mm. So 
I'm still going through all of these motions and I'm still progressing. I'm just, you know, I have a bigger support than some other artists, but it doesn't make me like a bad person or it doesn't make me like any better than any other artist. I can guarantee you there are hundreds and hundreds of artists who are more talented than me and have, you know, better songs than me, but you know, it's all about exposure and right. I am lucky enough to, you know, have my um, opportunities that I've had in my experience and, you know, what I have. So I'm not taking it for granted. I'm not rubbing it in anyone's faces. I'm not comparing myself to other people. If people judge me off of that, you know, that's for them to judge. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to like be upset about it or it's not going to like make me feel a certain way. You know, I know what I have. I know what's inside me. I know like the talent that I have. I know that like I can work hard. I know that, you know, I've had all of these opportunities, but I'm not going to like make myself like oh i'm so much better than this person like i know in my heart that like i'm just lucky and um you know i have to capitalize on my experiences but i'm not like trying to rub it in and if people want to judge me on that like that's that's okay like i'm not taking it personally you know i'm i was adopted like i said before so like mm. i know how lucky i am and i know like the experiences that i have are not normal but you know it could have been something different. So I just kind of take it with like a grain of salt. I'm just like, you know, it's okay. You can judge me off that, but I hope it doesn't like make you think I'm a bad person or not want to work with me. Like I always want people to, you know, meet me first and kind of understand my personality. And then hopefully their mind changes that way by yeah. like just having an experience with me and actually like talking because I feel like I'm a pretty genuine person and you know, I want the best for everyone. Like, I don't think I'm better than anyone. Like I said before, I, I think everyone is amazing in their own way and everyone has like their own talent. So that's kind of how I would take it or like respond to it. Yeah, that's a good mindset. So what are you going to college for, by the way? I'm actually studying education. Ooh, interesting. So not anything related to music. I'm studying community education and working with nonprofit organizations and stuff like that. So something completely different from music. Um, but yeah, hell yeah. What made you get into that? Honestly, um, I had a like difficult time choosing a major and this was just something that I found interesting and kind of worked with, um, the GEs that I was taking. So mm -hmm. I just decided to roll with it and, you know, it actually was very interesting and I'm glad that I chose it. And I think that there's a lot of cool paths outside of music that I can use to my degree for it. So do you think it relates to music in any way also? Um, Maybe not like the actual recording recording part of it and like, you know, production, but I think being in rooms with people and being able to communicate and help people and educate them and kind of how I was saying, like, just help everyone with their experiences. Like it helps with that because, you know, it's education. So you're learning to teach people and you're learning to like relate to people and get people to feel comfortable because you have to do that when you educate people anyway. So mm -hmm. just being in rooms and making people like feel comfortable and helping them with certain things. Like I feel like it's good for that, yeah. but not necessarily for like recording music. So you, uh, you said that like your, uh, commute to the studio is like a, it's a bitch, but besides mm -hmm. that, how do you, uh, manage school life and studio life? Um, you know, I think for me and like my goals, I have to make both of them a priority. Mm. So I try to take my classes early in the morning and leave the rest of my day open for music and going to the studio and just, you know, doing whatever I have to do with music. So, you know, it's kind of long days, a lot of days, but you start early with school and get what you need to do with school out of the way. And then the rest of the day, you can use it to do your music and, you know, work on your craft. So that's how I manage it. And that's how I um keep my day organized and stuff. So. Mm. so when you're at school, are you still like looking to like make friends and things or do you just like focus on your work? And, yeah. Like, you know, I'm, it? I'm a friendly guy. So yeah. <laughs> if people want to come up to me and be friends, like I'm not, gonna be like oh no like i make music i only i'm only friends with people <laughs> in music you yeah, know yeah. like dude I, anyone that's a cool person that's genuine like i'm good we're friends mm -hmm. so in my class you know it could be anyone like if you're a cool person if you 
care about things. If you have different perspectives in mind, like I love to have a conversation about anything. And then, you know, there's a lot of cool people in music that I love being friends with too. So, mm. you know, anyone that I could be friends with, I want to be friends with just because I don't want anyone to like not like me and I want to like as many people as I can. So, right. So when you, before like music or going to college, do you have a dream job that you like thought of before? I mean, when I was really little, I wanted to be an athlete. Like I loved basketball and football. So mm -hmm. I wanted to be Reggie Bush when I was little. I wanted to be a running back. Yeah, yeah. Like he was super cool. And then um, not like particularly, I just like an athlete really. And, you know, I looked up to my dad. I didn't really want to be a lawyer, but I loved the fact that like he was a cool like businessman outside of it too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, when I was little, I feel like most, like me and my brothers all kind of wanted to be athletes and then reality hit that we weren't good enough. <laughs> but you said, you, you said uh, in an interview that you said your brother's like an actor. So you guys both chose yeah. like the media route though. Yeah. Yeah. My brother's an actor. So he is, he was just on the show Vampire Academy. Oh, nice. He was like one of the main characters. It's like a vampire show. Um, it's pretty cool. Like, go check it out. He's a cool dude. And Hell he's yeah. also just did a movie that's not out yet. So I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it. I'm just not going to say anything. But he just did a movie mm. and it's really cool. And I actually got to go see him, um, like, not record film, I guess. Mm. And it was very cool. Such a cool experience, you know. I just love anything in entertainment. I love all types of art. So seeing him, like, chase after his acting dreams is so cool. And do those worlds collide for you yet? Like, is he able to give you any advice? And have you been able yeah, to... Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. He's the dude that doesn't care about what anyone thinks. Like, he'll just go out and do it. And, you know, if he gets laughed at or if he gets, like, booed or whatever, that's just what it is. Like, he doesn't care because like, he just loves it. So he definitely rubs that off on me with music. Mm -hmm. He's like, bro, just release. If you like it, if you have any type of feeling towards your music, bro, just do it. Who cares what people think? It's your art anyway. It's not their art. So he rose on me that way. He like he's very brave and confident. So that definitely helps with my music. Mm -hmm. And your family are they liking your music as well? Yeah, hell yeah, they do. You know, my parents they're not like musical people, but they support it and they think that my music sounds really cool. They always like to share it with their friends and see what people think. So. They're also very judgmental. Mm, so that's if good. they're like, what, what is this? They'll tell me, which is good. I appreciate it. So I'm all for, you know, critical feedback and making things better. Yeah, I feel that. My, but, my fucking yeah. mom is the reason why. So I had a previous podcast name, and my mom is the reason I changed it. <laughs> so, what was it before? So Can it you was, tell me? Yeah, it was, it was called H H H. N A S T, and it was an acronym for hottest hip hop news and sneaker talk. And if you try to say that to like Google or Alexa, H H H NAST. Yeah. And I called it the Triple H NAST podcast. And then if I said that, people thought it was like a wrestling podcast because of Triple H. And oh, like, okay. there was just so much confusion. Like no one knew what the fuck, how to pronounce it. And like, right. people would be like, oh, I'm about to come on the NAST podcast. So. I just cut off the H's and now it's just nasty. Yeah, that's yeah. like my family kind of had like, not like the, sim like it's a little similar. So mm -hmm. my original like stage name yeah. that I was going to go with was Matt Black. Mm. And they were like, like, just make it Matt. It's so much easier. And I was like, ah, yes. Fair enough. You know, so kind of similar, but no, yeah. you know, I listen to my family. I think my family is great. They all have, um, you know, great feedback and they all have their own opinions and you know at the end of the day it's it's my choice but mm -hmm. i love to hear feedback and opinions from other people because they're the ones that technically get to judge and listen to it like i get i can make it but i'm not the one putting out all my streams so if people give me feedback i tend to like take it pretty seriously and like to hold it and think about it so yeah, and and you'd hope like your family would give you genuine feedback, which yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. No, they're definitely very honest. Hell yeah. So. so you've been doing this for close to a year now. You already have a cool uh, feature under your belt with Marky Basie. How how yeah. did that come to be? 
So my manager, Justin, he was actually, I think, Mark's day to day for a little bit while he was touring a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And they became like, you know, good friends. And when I was making music and I decided this song needs a feature, he reached out to Mark and Mark was cool enough to want to help and do a feature for it. So we got to, you know, meet up and talk and kind of hang out and he he thought it was cool and he was down to do the feature so he did it and uh yeah hell yeah that's cool because he's in la also right yeah that's awesome so do you think that's gonna be like a relationship you build or is it gonna be like one of those like one i mean i'm definitely gonna try to build on it i think you know he's a very cool guy he's got a lot of like experience in music that i would love to like pick his brain about and kind of get you know his help with my music and I would definitely love to continue that relationship with him because he's a really cool dude. So, mm. and he could give me a lot of good tips and tools to use with my music. And hell yeah, so you got to check out our interview we did three years ago. Yeah, I'm that going to so after this. <laughs> I didn't know you did an interview with him, so I'm definitely gonna check it out. That's so fucking. So, do you have any besides Mark? Do you have any like fun like celebrity stories so far since you've started? Uh. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to say it because like it's cool, but I don't know if my brother will be too happy about it, but you know, it is what it is. But um my brother, the actor, mm. he had like a little thing with uh Halle Bailey. What? And yeah, so they were like, you know, kind of cute for a little bit and um me and Halle actually made a song together and you know they ended up not being together because she's with ddg as you guys have seen but um i'm like still like trying to release the song so i'm just trying to figure out um if we could do that but it's a really good song (laughs) so hopefully we can release it but it's it's so it's really cool yeah see how does how do things like that work like there does have to be like contracts involved when it comes like a big yeah so technically since like it's her art right i have to get it cleared from her but she has to like get the clear from her management and i'm pretty sure she signed to a label and i don't know how it works you know she's like a disney princess now so i don't know what kind of stuff we got to go through but i would you know i think she has to get it cleared first with her management and if she signed to a label she's got to you know get it cleared from them but if that could get clear let's put it out there to the world please yeah we can get it out to the world it's a good song it's like a little love song kind of it's fun it's good damn that's sick as fuck what the yeah heck? so i mean i have it to listen to and i love it so that's my cool little experience um but i'm sure there'll be more so i try not to like dwell on it if it doesn't happen you could always actually i don't know if you can do I was going to say, like, secretly, like, release it on Reddit or TikTok. No, no, no. No, no, you want to be. respect. Yeah, I yeah. respect. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to burn any bridges, so. There, there. That's a good, know? that's a good point. Yeah, I'm not trying to be on anyone's bad side, you know? You're if she's learning. willing, she's willing to release it, then let's do it, but I'm not going to. Fair I'm enough. not going to be on anyone's bad side here. That's a damn. That's that's a that's a cool person to make. No, not a lot of people can say they've made a song with her. So that's I know. So it's very it's very cool. I made a song with a Disney princess. So damn, that's wild. So so what what's next for you? And do you, are there any singles you want to promote? Um, I don't technically know what my next single is gonna be. Mm. I have a couple of options. We're just like working out whether we're gonna release one song versus another. Mm. But um, I'm gonna have a single out. Hopefully by the end of this month, but definitely next month, we're going to have a single out. It's going to be fun. It's going to be, I'm thinking it's going to be kind of like a more islandy type of a song. Not like the contents of the song, but the beat is definitely, you know, dance hall oriented, but like more R&B dance hall, kind of mm-hmm. like a Drake passion type of a vibe, mm-hmm. passion fruit. And um, yeah, so I'm going to have a couple singles, hopefully. Um in the upcoming months and then i'm working on an ep oh so, hell yeah yeah so we're working on the project i'm definitely very critical about what i want to put out because it is a project and 
I'm the dude that loves to listen through like the full project that an artist puts out. Like I want to hear it from like start to finish. So Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make it like as fluid as I can that way. Cause I'm that type of guy when like other artists release their music, I'm like, I need to listen from start to end. And I love like when it flows beautifully. So that's what I'm trying to make for my first EP, even though it's not going to be like crazy long. I want it to be like money. Yeah. My, my friends are on like that, um, 21 minute length seven song yeah yeah like Pusha T's been doing a lot lately yeah like that's I love that you know what I mean like it's it's short enough where like you don't mind listening through the full thing Mm -hmm. and like people can really hear like what you're on and your whole artistry and your vibe that you're getting across but yeah I'm trying to make something cool um I was making a lot of like really pop stuff, Mm. but I think I'm going to kind of dive into a more hip hoppy drums with like some cool Spanish guitar. Like just, I want it to be beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And have you, uh, have you, have you performed yet at all or do you have any, no, I haven't performed. I know. I know I have to. You gotta, well, I know. If you come that's coming Seattle. that's coming that's coming this year for sure definitely some performances so we'll see that's gonna be but sick. yeah i'm gonna come this year a couple singles for sure ep for sure performances for sure and then yeah we'll see where it goes but consistently grinding and working to put out the best music that i can because why not hell yeah um, what is some final advice you have for up and coming artists, creators, influencers? If you love it, then you should do it. If you like have any type of passion for music or content creation or making videos or I, I'm a full believer in using a creative mind and I love to do it myself. And it's something that I'm really passionate about and that I love. So it's something that I can chase you know, I watch, I've watched that guy, Gary V and he's like, you're so young. Like, why not? You know what I mean? If you never do it, but you want to, you're just going to live with regret for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? We don't know whether or not this is going to be like successful or we're going to be able to do it for the rest of our lives. But without the like opportunity or chance of trying it, like, I don't want to live with regret knowing that like I could have been a big artist or, you know, why not? You know, hundred percent. you have one life, you can go do a job or you can go, you know, work for a company whenever, you know what I mean? There's mm-hmm. people who do it for the rest of their lives, but there's such a small gap to like follow your dreams and chase your passion, especially for like an art where it's kind of a young man's game. Like you want to do it when you're young, you know, mm-hmm. so chase it, follow your passion. It's so, it's so important to use your creative mind. So that's my advice. Hell yeah. And uh, what is the easiest way for people to reach you? Um, you go to any of my social media. It's I think all of it is I Spy Matt. So I Spy Matt, no capitals, no space. Um, you can reach me there. And I'm usually responding to every single person because anytime someone reaches out to me, it's the coolest thing ever. So if you want to reach out to me and say anything, if you want to collaborate in music, I'm down to collaborate with anyone. Um, yeah, reach out to me. Let's make music. Let's talk. Let's do whatever. And I am willing to do anything. Hell yeah. This has been the NAS okay. Podcast with... Matt, thank you for having me, Blake. Very, very cool. I'm very honored to be able to have this experience. So thank you again. Hell yeah, of course.